So here we're going to check out this Cub Cadet SLTX 1050. I just want to see if the engine will run. And uh, this is one of the tricks that I use. You know, a lot, lot, lot of people do this. But you have to have a good battery in it. And uh, I have a, a push button start from when I was an auto mechanic. And I'm going to hook that up to the battery and go right to the starter. Because the starter solenoid on this is bad. It clicks, but it, it doesn't crank the engine over. So, uh, you know, here you can see I'm showing the, the battery. And then I'm going to hit the key, and you're going to hear it click. And, you know, that means that all the safeties are not causing a problem here. And you probably will be able to hear this click. So, I'm hitting the key, and all it's doing is clicking. So now with that clicking there, you know, that's the starter solenoid when you're hitting the key. So that means that all the safeties are allowing the tractor to try and crank over. So at this point, you don't need to go chasing after any safeties. If there was a safety problem, you wouldn't even get that click. But, you know, it's clicking. It's allowing the key to try to start the engine. So that, that clicking you hear, that's your solenoid. So that rules out, like I said, that rules out your safeties. The key is trying to make it crank. And you can verify if it's getting power or not. You take your meter, connect it right here. Your, your wire going to the starter. On these here, it's just a simple one, one terminal. And I was not getting any power there. So that means I take my automotive tool here, jump starter. Well, starter button. This is for you to be underneath the hood. If you're setting valves or something on a car, in the old style cars, you connect this to the starter and you hit this button and it'll crank the engine over. Well, we're going to use it to see if this engine will actually start. So I have this automotive style starter button hooked up. I have it hooked up to the positive terminal on the battery here. And then I have it hooked up to the wire going to the starter. Now that wire comes from the other side of the starter solenoid. So we already know it's ready to crank because we hit the button and all we're getting is that clicking sound. So at this point, you know, the, without checking anything else, the starter could be the problem. The battery could be too low to provide enough power for it to crank. Or even though the starter solenoid is clicking, the contacts inside could be corroded away or burned away because they, they burn every time you hit the starter, every time you hit the key, there's a little bit of burn on the contacts. So what the problem is on this one is those contacts are bad. So now this remote start button is going to let that engine crank over whether the key's turned on or not. So at this point, if it's a gear drive, you want to make sure it's in neutral. Make sure your brake is on because if it's in gear, it could start rolling away. It should crank over. Just like that. And if it sounds a little bit funny, the mounting bolts are not as tight as what they should be. It was a lot worse. I tightened them down some. But we're going to crank this back so it's right on top of the compression stroke. We're going to give a little uh, engine starter here. Not starting fluid. These engines don't like starting fluid. So we're going to put this up on choke. Well, it doesn't really matter. We're going past the carburetor. So that's what you do to, to see... You know, I just wanted to see if the engine would even start, and it started, and it sounds okay. But, you know, that's without replacing any parts. We're, we're bypassing the starter solenoid, because on this one, it's down there by the battery. It's hard to get to. MTD loves putting them in the back with the battery. Most other manufacturers put them up here under the dash. They're easy to get to, easy to jump across. You, you don't even need to go the way I did. If it was under there, 
under the dash, you could hit connect both wires right to that solenoid and just jump from the battery side to the starter side. But us guys that, that deal with these, this is how we would go about seeing if this thing would even run. Say you're at the auction, you know, you have time to check it out a little bit. You know, you, you got to have some battery power. You have your, your jumper wire there. If we didn't have the key, I can unplug those wires that connect the engine to the tractor, and it would still start. So now I'm going to start this, and I'm going to run it on the carb cleaner itself. And what this is going to do, it's going to bypass the carburetor. It's going to eliminate any problem with the carburetor. The only thing the carburetor is going to do is control the engine speed with the throttle plate. But, uh, you know, if you have a dirty carburetor, this is going to totally bypass that and, and let this engine run because it, it's like dumping gas in, but it's much more controlled because it's a spray can. And uh, this gum out carbon choke cleaner, they run really well on this. It, it doesn't hurt the engine at all. It almost wanted to stay running there. It was actually running on its own a little bit. But I think the carburetor needs to be cleaned on this. So this here is a, a trick how you can go about making an engine run. You know, that, there I'm showing the, the very dirty air filter. But, uh, you know, this is how you can make an engine run regardless of what kind of condition the, the carburetor's in. You know, okay, so you're going to have to clean it later, but you, you just want to know if an engine actually will start. You know, this is how you go about it. You, you get battery power up there to the starter. If you have a jumper box, you hook it right on the starter. And uh, if you don't have a key or if some of the safeties aren't working right, you unplug the connections that connect the, the engine to the tractor and uh, it'll run like that because the, the safeties are not going to cut out the ignition. You know, but fortunately that wasn't the case here. So, you know, this tractor is going bye-bye. I just needed to show that the engine was good internally. You know, sure, it, it's still going to need work. Somebody else is going to going to work on the carburetor and, and get it running and stuff. But now they know that they have a good end, that they're buying a good engine. You know, so hopefully this helps some people out. You know, uh, like and subscribe and, you know, there'll be more like this.